<laughs> okay, I was raised Catholic, and so like both my parents were Catholic, and I, you know, I was a good little boy, and I just always followed them everywhere. So I went to church every week, you know, did all the good things that you know good Catholic boys are supposed to do. And you know, I was totally fine with that. But as I grew older, I felt myself just like distancing myself just further and further from the church. Just like all of a sudden, like all the sermons seemed like they were just like talking more and more about things like you know, abortion and gay rights. And I was I always thought that church was supposed to be a place where you know it's supposed to be about love, you know, like love for your neighbor, love for God, things like that. And I just felt like you know the church was just like shoving these like political beliefs down my throat, and it's like not what I wanted from church. So I, I, I didn't feel like that's what church should be about. So I became like really disillusioned with the church more and more as I grew older. So then I came to college, and then I stopped going to church for like three months. And I actually just really loved it. Just like, you know, I didn't have to deal with all this anymore. I didn't have, I didn't have my parents there to like force me to go places I didn't want to. And it was, I felt great about it. And so, like, you know, I started doing, joined all these orgs and met all these cool people. And I was like, I was like, all these things started taking up my time. And I was, felt like, you know, my life was pretty full of stuff. But at the same time, I always felt like there was something missing. And I couldn't figure out, I couldn't figure out what it was. And so, then I met a girl. <laughs> her name is Sharon. She's a good friend of mine now. Um, so I, I told her about how I've been feeling. Just like um, you know, I felt like this emptiness in my life, and I hadn't gone to church in a long time. So she invited me to go to an university large group with her. And so I had like a little crush on her at the time, and so I I couldn't say no. <laughs> Hopefully she won't see this. This is gonna cut off. And I said this is all new. She, if we're like everything between us is great. We're, we're just we're good friends. Just to clarify. And because this is on video, I just don't want to make this. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you know, I went to a large group, and it was nice. Like there was like um, I I don't exactly remember everything that was talked about, but like it was nice. You know, good like it was being there, being back with people who had these ideas. And I didn't really feel that much different, honestly. And then we went to this, we had like a prayer at the end. And I don't know, I, something just hit me then. Just like something in the prayer, something that we just talked about then. It's, again, like my memory's a little bit flawed. I can't remember all of it. But something happened that night. And I just felt, I realized what was, what was missing from my life this whole time, which was my faith. And like, I felt, I just realized that all this time I've been distancing myself from God more and more. And when all I really needed was just Him. And after that realization, you know, that was, that was like a big night. And then after that, I was like, I joined a small group, you know, I went to Winter Rock Bridge, started going to church again, joined a discipleship group. I did like all these cool things. And I felt like, you know, I was making some progress. But at the same time, I felt like I wasn't really going anywhere. Like, I couldn't figure out why. This is all last year, by the way. And so, this semester, or last semester, was like, honestly, some of the, the roughest months of my life. I just, I took on too many classes, too many hard classes. Like, Orgo was my elective. That was not fun. Also, it was a horrible decision. But yeah. yeah. And then I also became a VSA officer. Um, and that came with a lot of responsibilities and expectations, like they wanted me to come out to these things and do these things, and that took up a lot of my time as well. And I was just like so busy with school and activities and everything, and just I just became so overwhelmed with everything, with my life, you know. And, you know, I stopped going to university, didn't have time for that anymore, just because like I was so busy all the time. Like I was, I was pulling like an all-nighter every Wednesday, just, just like to not, like not even to catch up, not even to catch up, just like not completely fall behind. It was bad. And so like this whole time, it was just like, my faith just, again, just took a back seat to life. And it wasn't good. And so one day, on a whim, I decided to go to uh, an AIV group, large group, I mean. And this was last semester. So like, like the night before, I had pulled another all-nighter, and I was like, 
I am so tired of school right now. I can't focus. I can't do anything. And hey, this thing is happening in the same building. Might as well go to it. And so, give it a shot. So this was actually your testimony night last semester. Funny how that works out. Because I'm giving my own testimony. <laughs> <laughs> um, so and it was nice. It was great to hear like what all of you had to say. And then, um, and just like I hadn't thought about any spiritual things in just a long time. And so at the end of that, we had a listening prayer. So I visualized like digging a hole in the ground, just like digging a hole out, and just like putting all your burdens in there, and filling up the hole again. Now, I actually don't think that was what we were supposed to do in the listening prayer, but I was, I was kind of out of it, so, but it was okay. it was okay. So I did all that, and so like it's all pitch black. I'm in this like field, and like I can't see anything. Everyone, there's like no one around me. I'm just completely alone. And as, fill, as I filled up this hole, suddenly I see like a little bright light in the distance. Not even bright, I just like this little light in the distance. And it was just like really, really reassuring. It's like to know, like suddenly, you're not completely lost. You know, there's like something there, way off in the distance, it's far, but there's something there, something that you can go towards. And it, it felt nice just to know that I wasn't just completely lost. And then the rest of the semester passed by. I was still really busy. I couldn't really come out to any more AIB things that semester. It, just, it was tough. And then like this semester comes around. And I told myself, like, okay, this, is, this semester is going to be different. You're going to go out to AIB things more. And then, again, the same things happened. Like, I suddenly had so much work again. And like VSA officer duties and everything just started piling on. It wasn't, it wasn't as bad as last semester, so I did manage to come out a couple of times, which was good. And so one of those times that we came out, we discussed the story of, this, of the disciples when they were like, they were in a boat and they were like in a storm and like Jesus was off somewhere praying and they were just trying to get through the storm by themselves and like they kept rowing and rowing and they just couldn't get anywhere. And then suddenly Jesus appears in the water and they're like, whoa, he's on the water, is that a ghost or something like that? And they're like all freaking out and they're like, and then like Peter's, what do you say? It's like, it's like, Hey, is that you, man, or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, that's probably not what he said. <laughs> but he's like, yo, if it's you, just like tell me to get out there. And so Jesus like comes to me, jumps out, you know, and the story goes, he falls in the water, Jesus helps him out. And that stuff leads into led into another listening prayer. So this one, I was so it's like, imagine you're in a boat. You're in a boat, and it's like the stormy sea. And like, you know, you're kind of rowing and you're trying to get somewhere. But you're kind of, you're struggling. And then Jesus appears on the water. He says, he's calling to you. He says, come to me. And so, what do you do? So I, I was going through all this, imagined it. And Jesus said, come to me. And I just, I was like gripping the sides of the boat. I just couldn't get out. I don't know why. Like, I would rather face the storm he sees by myself then go to Jesus. And I just couldn't figure out why. And so, some things, like, so during this whole time, there was something that I started to really, really, bleh, to really realize about myself. And that was that um, I have this really big flaw, and it's this need for control. Like, I don't, I hate feeling out of control in my life. So, like, if I did something well, if I like, you know, got a good grade on a test, I'd be like, yeah, Tim, you're awesome. And you know, at the same time, if I messed up on something, I would say, like, Tim, you should have done better. It's your fault. You should have done this. You should have done something better that way. And like, no matter what it was, good or bad things, I always wanted to attribute it to myself, to myself and my abilities. I didn't want to like, like let anything seem like it was out of my control. So like, whenever unexpected things came out, and just like, I don't know, just like mess things up, and I just, I just hated that. I couldn't deal with these surprise events that just didn't go well for me. And it's, this is why, and I realized this is why I had trouble letting God back into my life. It's just because, you know, I didn't want to believe that he's the one with the power and the control. Like, I didn't want to accept that, you know, like, all that I am, all that I've done, all that I will be, it's all because of him. I just, I just didn't want to accept him. 
So I talked to Greg about this the next day. So about like you know my need for control. How I couldn't let Greg into or sorry, I couldn't let <laughs> God into my life. <laughs> um, and so Greg shared with me this parable, the parable of the Good Samaritan. So I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it, but for those who haven't, basically it's his travelers going going from one place to another. And on the way to the other city, he gets beat up and robbed and left for dead. And so he's just like lying there, and then like some priests and rabbis and people just like go and they just pass by him. They don't do anything to help him out. He's just still there and he's still dying. And the only person who helps him out is a Samaritan. And the Samaritan is like historically, Samaritans and Jews hated each other. And he was a, the traveler was a Jew. Was a bleh, was a Jew. So like the, basically he was being the only person who would help him was his mortal enemy. And so yeah, he took care of him, brought him to safety, things like that. And so most people will get the moral of the story as uh, you know, be good to your neighbor, like no matter who your neighbor is. But Greg suggests that I look at this from a different perspective. So what if you're not the Samaritan, but you're the traveler on the road? What if you're the person who's beat up and left for dead? And so you're laying on the ground there, and you're just completely unable to help yourself, you know. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. You're just, like, as good as dead. And so all these people will come by, and they'll all fail you, and they, will not, they won't be able to help you. But the only person with the compassion and the means and the willingness to help you is the Samaritan. And the Samaritan is Jesus. He's the only one who can do that for you. So without Jesus, you're just as good as a dead man on the side of the road. Just as that. Yeah, that came out badly. But, but with Jesus, you have life. And then we discussed another passage. Um, and then, actually, sorry, before that, we visualized, Greg asked me to visualize taking a backpack, you know, and then taking all your struggles, all your burdens, and just filling up your backpack. And then, you know, then you had to shoulder your backpack and go along where you have to go, things like that. And so, you know, I put in like VSA, schoolwork, you know, relationships, girls, etc. And like, you know, for the longest time, I could totally handle things on my own. And I was like, you know, I got this. I didn't need anyone to help me out. But as I added more and more things to it, the burden got heavier and heavier until it just broke me. You know, and. When, and then after that, uh, Greg asked me to read this passage from the Bible. Um, it's about, and Jesus is asking you to carry this yoke. And the yoke in this context is this, um, it's like the thing that oxen, that attaches the oxen to carry a wagon, to pull a wagon. And so, you know, at first you think, like, a wagon is so much heavier than a backpack. I don't know why I want to carry that. And, and so, like, at first, that's what it seems like. But... The difference is that Jesus is with you when, he, when you're carrying that yoke. When you're pulling the yoke, he's with you. He's pulling along with you. And because he's with you, he's shouldering most of the burden. And your burden that you feel is light. It's like it's not there at all. And that's just like so much more wonderful when he's with you. But the thing is that when Jesus is carrying that yoke, He's now leading it. He's now carrying, the, he's pulling the wagon where he wants to go. And so, he's going to decide where you want to go. He's going to decide what things that you're going to keep on the wagon. Like, maybe this one thing that you seem, that you think is important to you, he's going to throw off the wagon and says, that's not what you need right now. And so, and just like, following Jesus would mean that you're, like, I'm sorry. <clears throat> So, like, following Jesus would be hard, because, like, you don't know where you're going, and you don't know what's, like, your the whole life could change because you're letting him take the lead. And that's not as scary, and it was terrifying, and, like, it was terrifying to me. Just, you know, like, like, letting him into my life meant that, like, everything could be changed. But just, like, but imagine how much more glorious life could be when you let him take the lead, you know, just imagine all your burdens being like lifted up by Jesus. You know, just imagine how much more free you are without all that burden wearing you down. 
And it can be really scary, you know, to let him take take the lead. Because, you know, now you no longer know where you're going. But, you know, there are so many uncertainties in life. There's so many things that you don't know what, how it will turn out. But the only one certainty is that God loves you. And so, God will guide you to Him. And God will never fail you. So, in the end, I just realized that, like, I feared my burdens more than I trusted Jesus. And, but I was just, I was so broken, you know, I was, I had so much burden, I had so many struggles, that, like, the only thing that I had, the only thing I could do was turn to Him. And when I did, it was like this giant weight was lifted off my shoulders. And I just felt so much lighter. And it felt good. It just felt really good. And like I don't have the words to describe how I felt that day. It was just... But it was, it just, it was just incredible. That's all I can say. And, you know... When you're at your weakest, when you're your most broke, when you are most broken, that's when you need God the most. And I want to say, I, I want to say like a short verse here, and this is from Matthew 11, verses 28 to 30. It goes like this: "Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you." And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So this, this is all like a couple weeks ago, and I really do feel like I'm entering a new chapter in my life. Um, it's you know like everything is still tough and busy, but like I feel like. I'm actually doing so much better now, now that I've let God into my life, now that He's by my side. I can take on, like, it's, the burden is not as heavy. And I, you know, I really don't know where I'm going in my faith from this point on, or like, where I'm going in my life. But all I know is that God will guide me to where I should be. Because God is gracious. God is giving, and God will always deliver because He loves us. Amen.